Hey guys, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be updated every time I make a new video. Thanks, let's begin. It can see both ways, but it didn't see the shit fest coming. Hammerhead, aka Sharkman. This is the 2005 shark horror action thriller from director Michael Oblowitz, who also directed The Breed from 2001. This review was a request from Patreon supporter and a good friend of mine, Michael Cole. Let's get into the review. The plot on an island in the middle of the ocean. Genetic experiments are conducted, and a half-hammerhead shark, half-man is created because the man was dying from cancer and he spliced in shark cells, but they, whatever. Pseudoscience. And now the head of scientist is bringing in his colleagues, or ex-colleagues, and trying to get an investment going, but it's not actually what he's really trying to do. His plan is all about revenge. And the science of it all is ridiculous. And I'm not even a science nerd or buff or understand much about it, but from what I gather, it's a movie where Sharkman is created because Jeffrey Combs built a stronger microscope. It must be some powerful shit. I saw the change. Is that really all it took to find the cure for cancer in this movie's universe? Come on now, really? For the characters, we have Amelia, played by Hunter Tyler. She is Jeffrey Combs' son's fiance, and that wedding went nowhere because his son Paul apparently died. But it wasn't so. He's just been transformed into a hammerhead. Shark man thing. For her character, she's supposed to react to things like, oh my god, what the hell am I dealing with? What just happened? Why is this happening? What is going on? But her performance is subdued. She's not freaked out enough. I just can't believe that thing is Paul. Dr. King, played by Jeffrey Combs, the legendary Jeffrey Combs from Reanimator, from Beyond, Abominable, Would You Rather. He is actually okay in this movie. He's not too bad. He's not phoning in his performance. He gets angry. He has emotion. And he's also very crazy. Why? Are these people still alive? He's just spouting the scientific jargon like it actually makes sense. Kind of stretching it. But he sells his performance and his character because Jeffrey Combs is an amazing actor. Tom, played by William Forsythe from The Devil's Rejects and Halloween, the 2007 remake. He was the abusive stepfather. He's actually quite a badass in this movie. He's got a nice, cool voice. He's like, Amelia, I absolutely adore you. It's like, whoa. <laughs> and he fights with guns and knives and spear guns. And he's like, he's a kick butt character. He really knows how to take action right when the horror begins. Feeder, the boss, played by Arthur Roberts. Feeder is a businessman through and through. And I like his name, Feeder. Kind of like what happens to him later in the movie. Pleasure in doing business with you, Mr. Fetter. Or is it Fetter? I'm going with Feeder. Probably Fetter because there's not two E's, but it's spelled F E D E R, so catch me a break. Then there's Dr. Krauss, played by Velazar Beniv from Shark Zone and Lake Placid 3. He's the assisting scientist, and he loses his fingers in the first five minutes. Way to go. He's quite a character, actually. What makes you think we can control it? The acting from pretty much everyone is unconvincing. Save for Jeffrey Combs, who sells his pseudoscience, no matter how illogical it is. 
Forsyth. Liam Forsyth is a bit creepy at first, but later becomes a badass character who takes on the baddies, like I said, but he is quite creepy at first. Here to fix your computer, ma'am. Oh, mister. I have so many bugs. <clears throat> this is a movie that had a great idea but was hampered by a small, tight budget. The locations are nice to look at at first, but once they begin trekking through the jungle, it's obvious it's just a forest in Bulgaria. They found a little patch of water to work in there and utilized it as if it were several different locations in a few scenes. As for the scenes that required the use of the ocean, that was shot in Bulgaria too. Which I didn't even know there were oceans in Bulgaria. Geography, man, it ain't my strong suit, neither is science, I'm just a loser. The shots in and next to the ocean create a stark contrast between it and the forest. One is almost breathtaking, while the other lacks the lushness and fullness of an actual jungle. There are certain ways they enhance the illusion. I guess. Vines and other plant life make appearances and attack the characters. <coughs> it adds to the apparent attempt. Like they didn't need to throw in that they drink from a tropical water vine to stay hydrated, but they did and it at least shows that they tried. Another department where I feel they got some things actually right is the action. We get shark on human action and human on human action. The former is sometimes even a bit intimate, which is... Ugh. Yep, that's right. Jeffrey Combs is trying to create an offspring with the shark that will actually survive. Hammer human. You're gonna impregnate me? No. He is. Apparently, it isn't even successful several times. We only see it once, though, so thank God for that. Writer Boaz Davidson wrote and produced a lot of these kind of movies from the early to mid-2000s. Creature flicks. He eventually went on to action flicks, straight up, with films like Rambo 2008, Rambo Last Blood, The Expendables 1-3, to and the Fallen series. You know, Olympus has fallen, London has fallen, Angel has fallen, the upcoming Night has fallen, and many, many, many more. He's had an interesting career, for sure. He brought both trades to this movie, and you can tell he always liked to infuse some kind of gunfight with the horrors of the environment. Whether it be a half-man, half-shark hybrid, or the Viet Cong, or a drug cartel, there are some wacky ideas in this movie, but they are not that well executed. The gore, the effects, we get blood splatter and impaling and some severed limbs. It's needed a more savage brutality. Hell, the film is only rated R for violence. They should have used the hammerhead suit they had more than the CG shark model they had. However, even with the CGI, they use it sparingly. We get quick glimpses of our fishy fiend, but that's about it. They're clear shots, but the camera doesn't stay on them for long. Not even really long enough to get a good look at the full body of this creation. What we do get to see is hit and miss. The practical suit is a bit bulkier than the CG model. In fact, it looks kind of pudgy in comparison. The motion picture soundtrack. John Dixon, who also composed a Larva, Pterodactyl, which I also reviewed, and it was a Patreon request from Michael Cole, and Mammoth, composed the music for this movie. There is some decent and mildly memorable stuff. The tense build-up music isn't too bad, and adds a cheesy creepiness to the incoming carnage. Some piano work is used, and helps to maintain the gravity of the situation. One section of the theme that is goofy, yet I love it, is a bombastic and almost upbeat arrival tune. Deep Blue Sea did it better, but this still fits the silly nature of the movie. Overall, this could have been better, but it could have been so much worse. There are snippets of cool ideas and powerful performances, but they're all overshadowed by poor executions all around. For every one good thing in this movie, there are three or four bad things to accompany it, to weigh it down. For Stick to Creature from 1998 for a much better, Shark Man hybrid creature film. 
Overall, I give Hammerhead a 1.5 out of 5. Thank you all for watching, and hit that notification bell to be notified every time I make a new video, and as always, subscribe.